So for this Challenge Wednesday, we're going to go through our patient, and his name is Jimmy. And Jimmy is a three-year-old child who presents with L2 myelomeningeal cell and significant cognitive impairment. The therapist would like to select the best orthotic for home ambulation. Which of the following orthotics would best address the therapist's goal? All right, so we got A, reciprocal gait orthosis, B, bilateral ankle foot orthoses, C, hip, knee, ankle, foot orthosis, and then D is the parapodium, all right? So let's go ahead, check this one out, super important. All right, let's start off at the top. So we got Jimmy, and Jimmy is a three-year-old child who presents with L2 myelomeningeal cell. All right, so I want to slow up for a moment because it's really important for us to understand what's kind of going on here. What is this whole myelomeningeal cell? What does that mean for us? All right, so myelomeningeal cell is what we call a neurotubule uh, defect, all right? In a sense, we're talking about the spine, and oftentimes the posterior aspect of the spine does not form. And so what happens is the spinal cord starts to protrude through the meninges into this meningeal sac, all right? So you know that the spinal cord is supposed to be encapsulated by the meninges, right? But you also know that it's supposed to be living in the spinal canal and then within the vertebra, right? All right, so we know that that's supposed to be the case. But with myelomeningeal cell, the back of the spinal uh, column, the, the, the posterior part of the vertebrae, does not form correctly. So the spinal cord starts to protrude outward, right? This is a big problem because it starts to cause certain impairments, which could be flaccid bowel and bladder, flaccid lower extremities, paraplegia, you know, that sort of deal. So our patient starts to end up with the inability to activate muscles, inability to perform things like ambulation or independent standing or those type of, those type of impairments or functional limitations. All right, so this patient has an L2 myelomeningeal cell. And it's really important for you to also understand that L2 part. Because we need to think about, okay, well, what muscles are involved with L2? L2 is our nerve root, right? So what muscles are supplied by L2? And so you should be starting to think, okay, L2, maybe a little bit of that femoral nerve, but also hitting a bit more of our hip flexors, right? That should be coming to your mind. And so we already know that our patient right now is going to have, a, have some issues with their hip flexors. All right, let's continue down the line. It says, and significant cognitive impairment. Now, that's also important, too. We'll come back to that part. But significant cognitive impairment, what that means to me is that, okay, our patient is going to have difficulties using, you know, uh, specific types of orthotics. Like if the child has to actually perform something specific where they have to use cognitive effort to do it, well, it might be difficult for them. So we want to keep that line in mind right here, significant cognitive impairment. Now, it says the therapist would like to select the best orthotic for home ambulation. Also important. Okay, child wants to move around at home. Got to keep that in mind. Which of the following orthotics would best address the therapist's goal? All right, and obviously our goal is to help this child, give them an orthotic that's going to help them with home ambulation, and specifically for a three-year-old child with L2, myelomeningeal cell, and significant cognitive impairment. Overall, that's the question that's being asked. Let's look at our answer choice again. So we got A, reciprocal gait orthosis, or ARJO. All right, we B, B is bilateral ankle foot orthosis, AFO. All right, C, hip, knee, ankle foot orthosis, HKFO, and then D is the parapodium. So let's start going down these and eliminating. All right, lock in this answer. What do you believe this to be? Let's look at the ARJO first. All right, the Arjo is one of the types of devices that is very energy costly. However, it is used for patients with spina bifida. I love that. It is used for this patient population. The fact that he's three years old, perfect. That fits with the Arjo. I love it. The fact that he has an L2 myelomeningeal cell, I love it as well. The Arjo is a orthotic that can be used for home ambulation. I love it. All right, but here's the deal. It says significant cognitive impairment. Does that change my answer at all? Does that fit in with an Arjo? And this is where I want to slow up for a second. 
because this is the thing that I never learned in PT school. I don't know if I was taught. Maybe I was just sleeping during that part. I don't know. But I never knew that with the RJO, the, the patient is going to require uh, some level of cognitive uh, functioning where the patient has coordination and, and they have that cognitive skill that allows you to use an RJO. All right. So see, the deal with the RJO, if you've never seen it used before, is that the child has to do certain things in order to make the device work. The child has to be able to shift the weight and flex the hip and, and so forth and, and actually have this coordinated motion in which they're shifting their weight side to side in order to unlock the leg that's going to move into swing. All right, if you've never seen it before, you can look it up on YouTube. But what I'm trying to tell you now is that, yes, the RJO is great for a patient that may have hip flexor weakness like our child here. Yes, it's great for our patient who's a three-year-old uh, with spina bifida and has L2 myelomeningeal cell. That's great. But the thing is the child needs the coordinative ability to use this device. If they don't have it, the RJO cannot be used. It's just not a good option for us. The fact that this question says significant cognitive impairment already pushes me away from that RJO. I don't like it. All right. Doesn't mean it's not the right answer, but I'm telling you right now, I don't like it. Let's look at B, bilateral ankle foot orthoses. Now, we already stated that this patient had L2 myelomeningeal cell. Let's slow up for a minute. L2, nerve root. All right. Let's think about the myotome. What are we really thinking about? What part of the lower body? You should be saying hip flexors to me right now. All right. So if our patient is already having hip problems with the hip flexors, that means that they're going to have problems with the knee extensors. Am I right? Because that's L3. That means that they're going to have problems with ankle dorsiflexors. So we're talking about L4. All right. They're going to have problems all the way down the chain. Bilateral AFOs, is that great for the ankles? Perfect. That can get that stability that we need potentially. That's great. But it's not going to do anything for the hips. It's not going to do anything for the weakness at the knee. All right. So the bilateral AFOs, it's just not enough to help our patient with home ambulation. It's not supportive enough. And if anything, we're letting our patient be at risk for falls and so forth, all right? It's just not effective. All right, so let's go ahead and eliminate B for now. Let's look at C. Hip, knee, ankle, foot orthoses, all right? Now, this is another orthotic device very similar to the Arjo. It gives that hip stability. It has the CAFO attached to it, so it gives the knee stability also has the stability at the ankle. So we're supporting the entire lower extremity. I love that. Is the HKFO used for spina bifida? Yes, it is. L2 myelomeningeal cell? Yes, it is. The one thing that's great about it, all right, is that the child does not require this extra coordinative effort, this extra cognition. They don't necessarily need that in order to still use the HKFO with the, the appropriate assistive devices. All right. So I like HKFO. It fits. It allows for home ambulation. It doesn't require a lot of this coordination and, and cognitive effort. It's the best answer right now. You might say, well, I don't like the HKFO as much because, you know, it's very energy costly. And that's very true. However, when we're looking at our patient, we're not just looking at how much energy do they have or are they able to complete it based upon energy. That's not the only thing we look at. We also have to look at things like cognition. We also have to look at things like functional mobility and stability. All right. And so in this case, I really need to take into account that my child has significant cognitive impairment. And right now, C is the best answer for that. All right. I'm locking it in right now. Doesn't mean it's the right answer. Slow up. Let's look at D. D is parapodium. Now, one thing I will tell you about the parapodium it is it's primarily used in this patient population, spina bifida, myelomeningeal cell. Yes, it is. However, it's typically used between the ages of zero to two. All right. I, we're not talking about children who are getting over the age of two. I mean, it can be used. But typically, we're trying to get the patient more involved in the ambulation, potentially. All right? Now, what I will say is that parapodiums, oftentimes, at least on the MPTE, they're going to be used for upright support, upright standing. 
So if we wanted to do like pre-gate activities, well, parapodium, there you go. All right, if we wanted to help the child assist with, you know, upright standing or weight bearing or weight shifting even, pre-gate activities, the parapodium would be the best. All right, I like that. But that's not what the question asked for. The question asked for home ambulation. Home ambulation, not pre-gate, didn't say that. It didn't say weight shifting. It did not say upright standing or anything like that. And therefore, the parapodium, although we could still use it, it's just not the best, and it doesn't answer the actual question. I don't like it. All right? Now, one thing I want to say before we move on, and I just dominate this answer, is the fact that the parapodium is considered an orthotic. All right? In your text, it's considered an orthotic. You shouldn't have eliminated this answer. Uh, saying that it, it wasn't an orthotic because it is actually considered that in your text. All right. So just a little side note there. Now, I will say for those of you who got this question incorrect, you'll be just like me when I found spina bifida questions with orthotics. I always got this wrong. A lot of times, though, it was because I really didn't understand the function of the orthotic. I didn't know what it did. I didn't know how it really helped, maybe from a superficial perspective but I wasn't able to apply my understanding because I just didn't know it enough. So what I'm saying to you, if you really want to take yourself to the next level, is really look at what are these orthotics? What do they really do? Who is it used for? And here's the key question you need to ask yourself. Why is it used for that patient population? Not just what does it do, why is it used for that patient population? That type of question is what's going to take you to the freaking next level and help you dominate the amputee.